Sean, did you know his middle name is Ridge? Oliver Ridge. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is it really started. I knew Ridge back when it was a lumber yard because my husband was a contractor and I can remember going with him to Ridge to pick up supplies um, for a job. Uh, so I remember going there when it was actually a lumber yard. Um, and then when I did the books for my husband, I remember, you know, getting bills from Ridge Lumber. So, um, so then when it burned down, you know, well, by that time we were out of business too. So we were all out of business. Um, and, you know, it just sat until my son and, you know, some of his friends um, found discovered this place the skateboarding place and and then it just seemed like this phenomenon that all of a sudden everybody's meeting up at ridge Ridge was one of the most amazing things to happen to the Baltimore skateboarding community. Uh, really what it was, it was an old lumber yard and they had torn the building down. And so what you ended up with were just these old polished concrete floors and they were weathered, they were outside, um, but they were still just incredibly smooth. And there were three different levels, which made it, you know, just absolutely perfect for skateboarding. I mean, this is one of the greatest spots I've ever seen. to go right with a spot like that. Um, you know, some of the things you need are, one, it should not be visible from any of the main roads, which this fortunately was not. It happened to have a big parking lot <laughs> right at the top, which was amazing. People could come, they could park their cars and, and go right down. Um, you have to have somebody that owns the property that maybe doesn't care so much that people are there or just isn't around to know if people are there. And that was the case with Ridge. Uh, they're really, I think the owners kind of just left that property alone for a long time. Um, so they didn't even realize what was happening. Ridge was like skating a skate park in California. As smooth as butter. I think that's what made it so much more appealing than even going to other street spots. Just the smoothness. Like when I first skated there, I'd never been anywhere like that in my life. I think Ridge being in Baltimore, right on the outskirts of Baltimore, there were so many skaters in that area, it was just really easy for them to get to. And once you got there, you could stay all day. Like McDonald's was one way, Burger King was the other. Gas station was 100 yards away. You need a bathroom or food or run home. Everything was like right there.
I guess getting out and seeing what else there is to skate in the world, Ridge kind of had everything you would need. Some days you show up the ridge and there'd be a whole bunch of stuff out there that wasn't there the day before. Uh, yeah, this one, people bring it up at night. People were going to parks and stealing benches, bring those benches up the ridge. They didn't even come back and steal them back from us. You know what I mean? I mean, everybody was getting everything from anywhere. That, that's what it was. You know, your perspective wasn't skate spots anymore. It was, what can I get up to ridge to create that spot up at ridge? There was no one set way in which we accumulated all of the stuff that was at the ridge. I mean, we had that gray box that I felt like became the staple of the entire place at one point. And it was one of those gray plastic metal boxes that are at all the Baltimore County skate parks. And a couple of guys, not naming any names, they went in one night took the box, loaded it up in a flatbed, brought it to the ridge. And that became the staple for learning tricks at the ridge. That was the thing you wanted to go skate at all times. The area behind me is significant because this is the actual skate park. Well, was the actual skate park where me and Jeff came and took a box. Me and a couple of friends of mine, we were in another county and we skated a skate park and they had this perfect box. We skated it there for like two hours one morning. We we're like, man, like this would be sweet to have at Ridge. Really sweet. So we kind of planned out to take it from him. Jeff and I decided to come up here uh, two or three in the morning with flashlights and and uh, dark clothing, stuff like that. And if you go all the way down to the end of the driveway, it's a nice little parking lot. And I dropped Jeff off at the fence and rode to the bottom and we communicated with light flashes, making sure there was no trouble, no cops, no nothing. We came back that night, there was a lock on the fence and we couldn't get in. And we kind of looked at other ways we could get this box. And it just so happens that the fence is assembled with these little, you know, bolts that hold it in place. But those bolts are the same size as the, as the nuts and bolts on, on your skateboard. And you can actually use a skate tool that you can get like at a skate shop and it would fit the fence perfectly and you could disassemble the fence. So that's what we did. We disassembled a, a big section of the fence, laid it down on the ground and uh, it was perfect. We went in to go get the box, went to pick it up and holy shit, this thing was about seven, 800 pounds, extremely heavy. And my scrawny ass was not picking it up. Uh, so we picked up, all three of us picked up one side of it and sat it on the end of the skateboard. And then the other side, we all three picked up and wheeled it to the back of my friend's uh, Ford Explorer and like stuffed it halfway in. And then uh, one guy drove, one guy, me, laid on the box from the inside while another guy drove behind us in his, uh, in his little Volkswagen to, uh, to keep it, you know, so police didn't pull up behind us. So we drove out of there, we get to the first stop sign, we stop, and the guy behind us in the Volkswagen just collides into the box. The box takes like almost no damage. The Volkswagen's got a pretty jacked up hood. We did it because Ridge, man. That box was significant, man. That was like the start, you know, it was like six or seven of us. And we had a box that we all drug out there and literally had sessions for hours and hours every single day. And, ah, you know, and it sucks because you can't bring that back. You can't wake up tomorrow morning and relive it, you know? But those were awesome times, man.
And unfortunately, somebody stole that big gray box from Ridge, but it served its purpose. By the time that box was stolen, the community skateboarders were already building Ridge and, and adding to it. So you didn't just have to go to, to skate a, a great box, you know, you skated everything. And it just, it started, it started Ridge and it started everything. And I don't know, man, it feels good now thinking about it that I was part of that. I had brought some ramps that I had at the shop. I just didn't have anything else to do with them. Um, so I dropped those off. But the wood stuff seemed to get tore up really quick. Um, I guess the weather, I think kids there too were just destroying everything. But all that stuff would just get destroyed and I think that's how the, the concrete stuff started to evolve. Fred Flintstone did it back in the day. What was that? What, uh, this right here is a prime example of Fred Flintstone. Yeah, uh, dinosaur crane. What we don't have dinosaur crane is Jeff likes to state. Actually, it's probably back there, but. Dinosaur crane. Crane from uh, Flintstones. Flintstones. Oh, oh, oh. You know, this would have been a lot easier back then. <laughs> Yabba dabba, dude. What if? We brought a lot of concrete in and built a bunch of stuff out of concrete. We thought it was the best idea we'd ever come up with. That's when we brought in like the cement truck. We didn't really know how much concrete to get and we didn't know how much concrete we were gonna end up using. Might have done it on a Sunday so that the car place wasn't open because we were really scared about the car place next door figuring out what we were doing. So I think we met the concrete truck driver at Ridge and I guess the gate wasn't locked or something and we just had him just drive right into Ridge. And uh, he asked us a few questions about what we were doing and I think we just told him he should probably not ask and he was like, that's all right, that's fine, yeah. No problem, I won't ask anything. And uh, yeah, uh, he, he brought the truck all the way down at the bottom of the Little Dock, and uh, we filled that hub up with a lot of concrete. John made like a form out of like particle board or whatever, and I just remember a cement truck is like dumping, 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 and the shit just exploded. <laughs> oh, man. And then like after it dried, it had like a bubble on the side of it because it, you know, there was an incident. But yeah, it was crazy. At that point, we didn't know how long Ridge was going to be there. We just were like, I don't know, what's 300 bucks? I mean, if it's here a couple months, it would be well worth it. I really feel like that was when Ridge took off. very beginning it was mostly mostly just some some ledges going down people said i could do something with that up and you'd think it was a festival. There's just all these cars in this uh, dirt parking lot in front of, you know, this fence. It's just so eyebrow raising, right? Uh, but at the time, Ridge filled the void of the Baltimore area not having an adequate skate facility. With Ridge, it was, for one, it was right off the highway. For two, it was, there was tons of parking. You didn't get kicked out. 
you had you had a Burger King and Arby's. You had a like a gas station, so there was always food around it. And and, and for the kids, there's a ton of kids in that area that didn't have cars or there's not much to really street skate around there. When we found the place, it was the fall slash winter time. So I got off of work around like four o'clock and I would race to Ridge from where I lived at in Baltimore County. And uh, I knew that if I could get there in quick enough time, I have about an hour and 20 minutes till the sun went down. And there's no lights at Ridge. It's not illuminated at all by any street lights. So when the sun goes down, it's, it's pretty much a done deal uh, for now. Later in life, we would bring floodlights and extension cords and we light that bitch up. But uh, at the time, uh, I'd skated every single hour that I had available. And then when summer came, uh, the chains are off. I'd get there at four o'clock and I'd stay until the sun went down. In good traffic, I could get to Ridge in six minutes uh, from from where I lived in the city because it was just that quick uh, Bellway loop, couple exits, and you're there. Now, when I used to get off school, uh, you know, you're looking at like three, three, three thirty. I'm begging my stepdad, hey, please, because my mom never had a car. Like, please, 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 will you take me? Will you take me? And then we're just sitting in rush hour traffic. Sometimes he wouldn't even leave because he knows he's going to hit the traffic on the way back and I have to come back and get me at 5 30 when it was dark anyway. So uh, I, I, I thank him internally for that. They just knew how important it was uh, It was for me to like go there, see everyone to see. built a skate park. Like it was like this, this industrial field of nothingness. I just saw it as, oh cool, I got a nice little spot up the street. And it turned into like, literally this nationwide known spot. Like that's just crazy to me. When word got out, people from all the neighborhoods all over Baltimore started coming. You know, we swept the place up, cleaned it up, got all the trash out of there. You know, got our hands dirty, mixed concrete and built stuff, you know, like, really made it happen, really turned the place into like what we wanted it to be. And I was intimidated at first because, I mean, everybody was good. ever driving by when there was no one there. There would always be somebody there. Ridge definitely changed my life in the aspects of like, you know, I could be myself. And that was super hard. A lot of kids had a lot of, uh, a lot of pro like not problems with me, but I got made fun of a lot. I felt as a whole, they were a very welcoming group. Um, they didn't judge people. Um, 
they kind of accepted everybody, which was pretty cool. Um, and, you know, I think that they felt like they had something to share with other people. Um, and they, they did that really well. And going to Ridge, I, I found a place to, to go and, and just, just express myself in skating and, and to have everybody welcome me with open arms. It was, it was just a great feeling. spent so much time up there just having conversations with people and learning tricks. It, it felt like home, man. Like, I mean, there was a point in time we were skipping school just to go up there at 7 a.m. in the morning. I'd, be, I'd fall asleep sitting on top of my board where the wind can't hit me underneath of the medium ledge for like an hour, and then wake up, you know, go get something at the store down the street and then skate for the rest of the day until the sun went down. Like, that's just how it was. Like, we basically lived there, man. I didn't care about anything. All I cared about was hanging out up at Ridge with my friends. I mean, this is seven days a week, 12 hours a day, plus some. I mean, sometimes we'd fall asleep there, wake up and just keep skateboarding. I mean, you'd be stinking, you'd be wearing the same clothes for three days straight, man. I mean, it got bad. It got to the point where like, people would come up there and be like, yo, you all right? And we all sort of kind of knew each other. Now this was just when we were all officially becoming one big group. For the first time, probably in my life, I felt like I had been surrounded by the people that I wanted to be around like for the rest of my life. Really, I think Ridge has just became a place where everybody who went there just felt like it was their family. And they mainly went there because they loved the people that they got to hang out with and interact with while they were there. Skateboarding was just the bonus, you know? How many skate spots are in Towson? One. How many of them are you going to skate today for your skate day? Um, probably just Chips Mountains. Dude, my, I think, dude, my back's starting to hurt. Oh yeah, that's right, I gave your mom a piggyback ride last night. Hey, Chip. Ah. Chip, your comeback terrible. Hey, Brinka, your face is terrible. That, that again. Is so bad. They skated on the street, they always had people telling them, you can't do that here, you can't do that here. And this was a place where nobody cared what they did. Ridge could have ruined you or Ridge could have made you. And I think for 95% of the people, it made them, you know? So to me, Ridge has an unspeakable impact, not just me, but every single friend that I know. That's one of the reasons why I opened the skate shop in Parkville, because it's within, I don't know, um, maybe two miles away from Ridge. So, you know, it makes sense. A kid breaks a board, you already have the scene. You, have, you go to the shop, you get a new board, bearings, whatever. The reason I have a shop to this day is because of Ridge. I wouldn't have been able to open a shop without Ridge. So when we had Ridge, we could go there and be our absolute selves. It was our training ground, man. That was our, our, our place to be us. Do it now.
now. Yeah. Do it now. Clear. You cleared that ball like 100 feet. Alright, come on, Dan. We got this shot. We got more. We got this. We got more, man. Come on. We got this. Two in a row. Two in a row. He's got it. He's got it. You got it, dude. You got it. Alright! <laughs> we moved it back! We moved it back! Danny no. okay. Gallagher, everyone! Oh. He's oh. It's feeding on his butt! Oh. This is Gary Gallagher! Oh. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I hate you guys. I hate you guys. I hate all of you. A skate park, that can only go so far comparing it to Ridge because I think that's where the comparisons stop in the space itself because we didn't have the same leeway with you know like official red tape you know government issue skate park it's just never gonna have that feel a lot of people don't have that ownership of the space of this is ours we did this and um you know we're gonna occupy it they'll occupy a skate park but they can't necessarily build onto it uh you know art is frowned upon, graffiti and stuff like that. Whereas Ridge was an open canvas with no rules, you know, relegation to nothing. And you just kind of make it happen there. Again, I can't like, I can't put it into words like how heavenly the space was. It was almost like God's gift to all these raggedy skateboarders in the neighborhood. Like, what did we do to deserve this, man? You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? I can't put into perspective of what other people are into, but as a skateboarder, you know what I mean? It was, it was picture perfect, man. It was a, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. If you were skateboarding, then you were skateboarding at Ridge. If you were gonna go to, uh, you know, contests, you were gonna meet up at Ridge beforehand. You were gonna go skate downtown, you were gonna go to Ridge beforehand. You skated downtown, you went to Ridge afterwards. <laughs> you had a busted ankle or, you know, whatever, you just went to Ridge to hang out. God, it was like, it wasn't even real. It was the coolest thing, you know? And like graffiti and, you know, people going on skate trips and going on these, you know, like vacations together and, you know, everybody's having parties or like we'd stay up, you know, laid up there and hanging out and just like spending time together and, you know, like dogging each other and just like having fun. And it was like, it was the best. I mean, I don't skateboard, but like skateboarding, that culture and like the, you know, the family that I've, I've gained through that. It's like, it's everything to me. It wasn't about dedicating all your time to Ridge. It wasn't just Ridge. It was your friends. It was the people you were meeting. It was advancing in the skateboarding. It was learning things. It was meeting people to travel even more. Like, yo, Ridge was opening up so many doors. It wasn't even just about skateboarding anymore. It was about a hundred different things going on all at one time. And every single one of those things were positive. Every single one of them. I mean, you had that asshole dip in there every once in a while and try to ruin things, but you know what you did? You beat the shit out of them and you kicked them out. And believe you, it happened plenty of times. You know what I mean? But that goes back on what Ridge would teach you. Ridge would teach you community. Ridge would teach you to be there for your friends. Ridge is probably the most fucking disgusting place I ever went to in my whole life, but it was it was paradise to us. Ridge's ultimate downfall was the trash. Even before we had just a community of people coming to hang out and observe skateboarding, we had people skateboarding and not throwing their trash away. I, when people talk about global warming and they talk about the garbage in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, 
I think about Ridge because that's what it looked like. Ridge looked like an ocean of garbage. The actual part you skated on would stay perfectly clean, but if you would look to the right, it was thousands and thousands of bottles. I can imagine those people were probably so mad who owned that, that property. Oh man. There was this big house right next to Ridge and they were basically a part of the family. Uh, I don't know his real name, but we called him Earl. Uh, the house next door, yeah. Um, everybody knows him as Earl. His real name was Ernest. There was a little bit of a turf war when we first started skating there because a lot of people would litter trash 7-Eleven and Taco Bell cups and you know potato chip bags. The wind, because we were at the top of the hill, would just blow into his yard. Oh, I never hear no words here. I never hear you guys cut. You guys can escape. Him to him. I'm gonna aggravate. Break that shit up. Skate? You don't know. Do you own this property? No fighting, no, no fighting. Hey, no fight, I want him to leave. I'm tired of his mouth. And this one here throws paper. And he came out one day and he was a little upset. And we just kind of came to like a gentleman's agreement. He's like, look, I don't mind you guys, if you drop your skateboard, you can come in my yard and you pick up skateboard, don't steal anything and pick up your damn trash. I was like, all right, we'll do our part. He won't call the police or anything to kick us out of there. And we wouldn't get trash in his yard. And for sure, for a solid two or three years I was skating there, we'd do like rich cleanup days. We had trash bags, contractors, big black trash bags. We'd throw all the trash in there and, and, and get rid of it and dump it. And uh, we had a, a pretty good agreement. He was encouraging. He would come out and watch and cheer. He would let us get drinks out of his hose. If we were there at night, he would let us run extension cords so that we could have lights up. And, um, you know, it just, Again, the guy was just so special. He helped us out a lot with water, electricity, and just keeping us calm, really. Because, I mean, if we do something stupid over there, that's affecting his property, too. He was cool with us skateboarding next to his house every day at no matter what time of the fucking day. And I can't imagine being as old as Earl and then living next to this open, uh, nothing and now all of a sudden you have all these teenagers for whatever reason coming and rolling around on it for years you know uh, I mean would it, Ridge had a like 15 year run you know you know for this man to come out and give your kids water you know to he would let them use the hose um, and he didn't know these kids and and I just thought as a parent that was really nice that there was such a nice person living next door that you know, took an interest in these kids. He was just sort of like the beast next to the sandlot, I feel like. <laughs> we just knew he was there, you know? <laughs> Sometimes you wanted to film something by the grace of Earl, whether he knew or not, we'd hook up lights to um, to his house and get some halogen lamps going and film some uh, some night tricks and stuff like that was the first time that I would do anything I mean even quasi like get a little bit of trouble you know um, yeah probably 14 15 uh, rigging up lights uh, to a thing to skate at night that was so much fun they would organize cleanup days um, where they would, um, you know, take trash bags up there and they would make a point to keep the lot clean because they knew that if they trashed the place and they got, um, you know, they had a lot of kids doing stuff up there that was illegal, then somebody eventually was going to complain and then they would legally be kicked off. And, you know, as long as they kept the place clean, everybody seemed to kind of leave them alone. 
It ain't me. I'm just telling you what's happening. But I'm sitting here seeing somebody cleaning something up. I mean, it wouldn't hurt if you got your ass bent over to pick up one bag of trash and see you get up. Like, there was plenty of times when some clowns came up there trying to talk shit or bring some business that had nothing to do with skateboarding to the ridge, and dude, they ended up getting their asses kicked. Like, straight up, like, we regulated that spot a lot. Like, we'll welcome anybody to the ridge, but if you came up there acting like a dick, it will walk you out, and you can leave, or you can stay there and get dealt with. That was just how it was, and it had to be that way. Summertime at Ridges, it was full-blown fucking chaos. It was a free-for-all, like you could do anything you wanted, whenever you wanted. I remember we would build huts because there's no shade. Like there's trees around, but nowhere that would offer you, you know, shade. So we'd literally build huts out of like, you know, the ma raw materials, you know, just laying around. And they would literally look like hobo huts, but it's just you know, like 10 skateboarders just trying to stay cool from the summer heat. I'm not gonna name any names, but when we built that hut, someone pissed all over the couches and I got scabies. And I'm sure someone else did. I know who it was. You know who it was. But we're not going to get into that. I got it all taken care of. Ah! Oh! <laughs> so off the top of one of the ledges, they essentially took some old beat up, you know, weathered wood that was there, which probably had nails and screws and all kinds of things sticking out of it and they put that over the ledge and then held it up with a couple of, you know, two by fours that, you know, again, probably didn't even nail them in. They were probably just sitting there, um, just waiting to come down and, and give somebody, uh, <laughs> give somebody a, a tetanus shot. Um, so, so yeah, just people started doing that kind of stuff. And then it got to the point where, again, that community started expanding and, friends of skateboarders started coming up just to hang out and just to be part of it and just to watch. It was just, it was the place to be. Summertime is when I think all the craziest stuff went down at Ridge, you know?
I remember one day it was really hot, so I had this nice fan at home that you hook up a hose to it and uh, get this nice little spray of water coming out. So I grabbed that, grabbed the hose and electric cord and uh, that one guy who lived in that house, he was amazing. He just loved you guys. He let us uh, set that thing up. You know, I offered him some money and he, he wouldn't take it. Somebody there, I don't know who it was, he, he offered me a hamburger and something to drink and I'll never forget. So I walked around the corner and I looked down in this cooler and there's uh, bottles of water floating around with these uh, frozen hamburger patties. <laughs> So I was thinking, no, I think I'll skip on the water. <laughs> I was like, please, God, you know, don't let anybody get sick. Uh, <laughs> so it was, it was just an awesome moment. I had a great time. Certain holidays, you know, we'd have, we'd have some things going on, you know, mainly like food involved stuff. Um, there's been a few things. There's been some contests with like, you know, local sponsorship local spotlight there's been some you know um professional or professional level there's been some stuff going on we had a bunch of teams and companies from you know around the country uh come to ridge whether they you know saw it on the internet heard about it whatever um which was you know was amazing for us to have and um it was actually like a blessing it was it was like something we would you know would, would never dream of happening to us We started filming there and then uh, the kids that were uh, skating there started to get national level coverage of, you know, that footage. Then people started asking and they started coming and coming and I think we're well into our 20s, you know, by this point. And, uh, you know, we would have huge pro level events. Uh, Red Bull bringing uh, an entire ramp set up there to do a demo. Um, uh, Andrew Reynolds, uh, Jake Phelps, all the Thrasher people coming through uh, Skate Rock and doing that whole thing. First place, Matt, everyone. Families would drop off their kids. Sometimes moms would hang out, let their kids skate. You know? And then we would talk to those families like, wow, what made you come here, of all places? <laughs> Again, the, the reason that it was so important to me as a parent was I just saw it as such a positive activity, but it really um, enlarged my family. And I think that's what I, I loved about it the most was it it enlarged my family. Um, and all of a sudden they had all these kids and, and, and they were good kids. They just loved to skate and have fun. And they, I think it kept them from, it kept a lot of them from getting into trouble because they had this positive activity. And, um, and it was just, uh, I loved watching my kids have fun. You know, what did Ridge, mean to me um believe it or not it it meant a lot to me because i saw it how it just brought you away to so many people when it comes to skateboarding you're not really in competition with one another but you're like feeding off everybody's energy and skills so for me just that environment um all the amazing people that i met it was really special for me. And like I said once before, I just being able to go down inside and, and ground zero if I wanted to, uh, I was very welcome. And that just meant the world to me. Yeah, being a female in a boys club and uh, basically being around people that did something that I didn't do. You know what I mean? It was like I had every right to feel like pretty outcasted and um, I didn't like at all.
you know, that was a serious technical challenge in itself to skate behind somebody and try to grab footage. So when I started seeing these things on the internet, I was just blown away. It was just crazy. And then I got to understand why it was such a big thing to everybody. And I was just, uh, I fully understood at that point what was going on. I remember like feeling very conscious of like the fact that I was experiencing something that was like very special. And I'm, I don't know why, for whatever reason, I was aware of that at that time, but it's like, I'm glad that I was. A lot of our friends grew up in the city, you know, and they didn't have good home lives. They didn't have good supportive parents who took care of them and did things for them. You know, they had, they were fending for themselves. Going to Ridge gave them that second home, that family, that place to go to stay out of trouble. I mean, without giving any names, I, I had lots of friends who would be coming there to get away from their family who were, for lack of better words, pieces of shit. And you know, I had friends that would be at Ridge all day long from sun up to sundown and wouldn't want to go home because they didn't want to go home to the life that they lived there. They wanted to stay with the family that we have created here. There were a lot of times when a lot of us we're all going through hard times growing up, especially when you're a late teenager and you feel like the world owes you everything and you're not getting none of it or a lot of us family problems or something like that. So Ridge was that perfect getaway for everybody. It was a, it was a support system. And because of that, you know, it, it just kept me focused and kept me away from the crime. I was able to do better in school and improved my relationships because I was able to get, you know, all those feelings out. Being from Baltimore, not everybody has everything that they need. And it's, it's a shame and people found what they needed there. I guarantee you that there are people that grew up through Ridge that may have had different lives without Ridge, may have had a life of problems because of not having Ridge or not having that place to go or not having that family to go to or not having the friends to call to have a shoulder to, to lean on when you're having some problems. Bridges probably shut down, I mean, an innumerable amount of times of just either kicked out by the cops or a sign posted with the gate either just shut or chained or whatever. We would wind up just opening back up, you know, soon enough. Um, we kind of saw the fence and maybe if we didn't see barbed wire, we'd go 
right over the fence. <laughs> right under the fence. Bridge is shut down. No, it's just a fence. Just go under it. We're fine. <laughs> and yeah. We were able to remove some of the fencing, skated it, had trouble with police, still skated it either way. We kind of rebelled for a while and got through the first one. The next two times they tried to shut us down were very poor attempts and we didn't really have any trouble um, starting it back up. But I mean, there, but there were you know significant breaks in between. get that chain up but they can't drive in here they can't walk yeah <laughs> right that's right. right after every hiatus of the ridge we'd end up back there with new things like new obstacles we just come build some new concrete stuff they skated a long time, many years, before uh, the place went up for sale. And I, I would imagine that's kind of what triggered it. The, uh, the next thing you know, um, they had put up a sign that it was for sale. And then they, I think they fixed the fence to try to keep the kids out. But of course, you know, that didn't work. And he said, okay, well, fence didn't work, so we're gonna bust up the concrete so they can't, you know, so they can't ride their skateboards on it anymore. Well, they, they didn't do near good enough a job. because <laughs> They went up there and basically just took a jackhammer and poked holes all over. And I would love to know how much they paid a construction crew to come up and do that because it had to be expensive. So they just poke little holes about this big uh, in, the, in the concrete all over, all over the place. So, one, we could still skate there in almost all the spots. And then two, you know, if there was an issue with a hole, all we had to do was just fill it in with a little bit of concrete. So that didn't work at all. So then I remember driving by to school one day, because um, I have to go past there to school, and, and looking over and seeing the big equipment. And I realized what they were bringing in was stuff to bust up the concrete. And it just, it broke my heart because I thought, what are they gonna do? You know, I think it was when they started tearing the ground up, that's when they had enough. You know, that's when they were saying, this is, if we're gonna get these guys out of here, then we need to do something, something dramatic. And I think that's, uh, that was the beginning of the end, is when they brought in the equipment. Oh my God, they tore down the rail. There's no coping on the hover. Oh my God. Look, 
you can feel it, it's coming down. Really? When he hammers it. Because the cops knew we had nowhere to skate. It ain't like it's like, oh, don't skate here. It's private property. Go to the skate park. We don't have a skate park. So they got it, you know, they understood. And it wasn't them being assholes kicking us out. It was it was the owners of the property. They did, I don't think they lived in Baltimore. They would come back and obviously maybe we should have cleaned up our trash more or that dude with the tail shouldn't have fucking burned the TV or these guys shouldn't have boxed at a boxing ring up there. Like, and it's inevitable that we didn't own the property and we probably would have got kicked out eventually, but things like that didn't help it. So the owners came and saw their property all fucked up and we're like, whoa, this is crazy. These kids are gonna sue us and you know, everything else. They built all this and we're over it and yeah. One day, I'm at Ridge, and there's a guy walking around painting yellow and pink triangles everywhere. And I asked him uh, if he was building something. I didn't know if he was like somebody's relative that was gonna help us build something or something like that. And I was like, hey, what are you building? He's like, building? What do you mean building? It's like, yeah, what are you building? You're like, you're spray painting these spots. It looks like you're gonna be building something. He's like, no, I'm gonna be tearing it down. When they sent these construction workers out, whoever sent them out, these guys came up there and they didn't show any respect to what we had built. I mean, to them, we were probably just some punk ass kids. They worked their nine to five. We're up there trying to skate. And I just remember guys coming in and like being like, ah, yeah, this shit's about to be gone. And just getting in people's way and marking stuff, like not showing any courtesy to what we had built. And, um, you know, the skaters had some resentment for that. Some of those bobcats got some windows broken out of them, some tires slashed, some dudes got hit in the face. To answer your question, there was an incident with the construction workers? Yeah. Yeah, there was. It started out as like an argument. Like, you know, what are you doing kind of thing. And then I think like, everybody started getting in everybody's faces a little bit and then it turned into like a physical altercation. It got like a little bit crazy. <laughs> I showed up with some people and, you know, the construction workers were obviously doing what they were told. We pull up and there's three construction workers and they're busting the place up and they're doing their thing. I guess they were hired to do. Uh, we're a little upset. We're, we're, we're hollering and stuff. We're trying to, you know, antagonize them a little bit. You know, you gotta, you gotta understand the frustration level we were at to be able to forgive us or, you know, or not just assume we're like a pack of animals or something. But yeah, we were very frustrated, you know. It's it's like having a bunch of people come and destroy, you know, where you built your life. So it was it was like, we, we, we took it a certain way. We felt some kind of way. Rage was like, that was the meeting place, you know. It was the community center, you know. For all of us, like, that's where we spent all of our time. Um, it's a place where a lot of us grew up and so, when it got shut down, it was like, it was like our house burned down, you know? One of them gets in my face and starts, you know, talking about how much money he makes doing what he does for a living and how he doesn't give a fuck about what he's doing and I take my shirt off, so I'm about to fight this guy. And then somebody, I'm not gonna name, comes over, pushes me out of the way. He goes, yo, I got this. And then, and then it spiraled out of control.
know, maybe it was time for me to move a little. But at that moment, when you're starting to see everything unfold right before your eyes, you know, that's, that's like one of those situations where I didn't want to look back and be like, yeah, Yo, you should have did something. You're like, well, my impact really have made a difference. Probably not. You know, I wasn't going to save Ridge that day. You know, none of us were, you know, none of us throwing rocks or swinging or, or beating all grown ass men wasn't going to save the place. But that wasn't the point. The point was that we didn't want to regret not doing nothing. You know, so. I guess you can say you want to stand up for yourself sometimes, and that's what we did. And we weren't about to regret not standing up for ourselves. Everybody took off running, and it's just me and, and the three construction workers sitting there, all bloodied, bruised up, everything. And the, the biggest dude there picked up my hat and walked up to me, and he goes, here you go, man. And just handed my hat out of respect while everybody else ran. And I just turned around and walked away. It... It's funny because we showed up there the next day after the incident and the, and the cops were already up there waiting for us. And they had said, listen, no shit today, man. They're like, y'all got to get it together, man. Like, it's, it's over. I hate to say it. The one guy says, I've been kicking you guys out of here for 13 years. He goes, you don't think that I don't understand what's happening here? He goes, I get it. He goes, but there's nothing that you can do about it. I'm sorry. He goes, you know, and I shook that man's hand. You know what I mean? I probably spit on his foot one time before years prior you know what i mean but at that moment i shook that man's hand because he was right dude he, he, spoke, he spoke the truth man like it's over you know what i mean so just cut it out leave these guys alone you know what i mean let them do their job let them do what they're here for they're not here to mess with you they're here to do a job you know so at that point in time we, we kind of had to let it go but um with that being said one of the head honchos at a construction company came up to us and he has says listen you guys don't mess with us for the rest of the week he goes, I'll write this off as a job done and we'll keep the top space for you. He goes, that'll give you some way we're that you guys can keep coming up here and stay out of trouble if that's what you guys have been doing. You know, it's kind of funny because I was just rapping with this dude the day before and now we had him work negotiating. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, it was cool. Yeah, it did make Ridge last a little bit longer, you know, and uh, maybe it did buy some times, but nonetheless, it just wasn't the same. You know what I mean? That day, that day changed everything. You know what I mean? I, like what that cop had said, you know, let it go. He basically laid it out and that was that, man. As much as I say, you know, we shouldn't be going to violence and things like that, I think that is one of the main reasons why we were able to keep the top for so long because of what those people saw in that fight, what those people saw in our faces, in their faces, in, in everyone's faces that they came in contact with while they were destroying that. There's a lot of people that passed through Ridge, skated Ridge uh, for however long and did all that, but I think there's a core tenant of people that really made Ridge, you know, uh, really made Ridge a special place. And, you know, you could they're the ones that you can see almost every day, um, you know, walk in, everyone greets everyone. And it really wasn't, about like the individual people per se it was this is ridge army this is the ethos of us taking the space and taking responsibility of this space guarding it from other things kicking people out they're like not skating or just come to their drink or whatever no that never flew because it was like no this is ours this is what we're doing here we're not uh you know this isn't going to be wasted because you want to come here and do something that this space isn't about. Um, and I think that's where Ridge Army comes from, is just the defense of this space, because it was ours. We, you know, didn't ask anyone for help. We just kind of made it happen and took stuff from wherever we could find it. Uh, it all came together as this like skate collage, uh, you know, that we were just living. Uh, and I, honestly, we needed to defend that. And I think that's where Ridge Army comes into play. It might have also been another way for the kids, even though they probably don't even realize it, um, to keep their group together. You know, because once Ridge was destroyed and everybody had kind of scattered, um, but this was a way to keep Ridge alive, 
to keep them bound together in some way, we're going to, you know, call ourselves the Ridge Army and we're all going to have T-shirts and, you know, we're going to still be this unit of people that are still going to be connected to each other and to Ridge in some form. I just find it interesting because what they were doing was exactly what a real army unit does. They stick together like family and they take care of each other. And um, and actually, I, I saw a lot of that. I, I, I still see a lot of that, where those Ridge Army guys uh, are still taking care of each other. Um, you know, there's some that are really struggling. Um, and I see other guys from that Ridge Army um, coming beside them to help them. And we wound up going back and half of it was gone. Just, you know, bulldozed. And everybody really thought it was done. Uh, there was a big, you know, RIP Ridge. And it was, at that point, it was over. When my grandmother sold her house. The whole family would gather at my grandmother's house every Sunday. And, and it was just like the most wonderful experience growing up. And then when the house was gone, there was no one family gathering space. And I kind of felt like that with Ridge. When Ridge was closed down for that year or so, there was no gathering space for the skater family. Well, you know, what do we do now? Uh, okay, well, I guess we still have this top. I had a skill, it seemed, at, at building these ramps and boxes and ledges and everything, and just, we needed somewhere to go. So it was my, respons my responsibility to build, but the, since I had some know-how, you know? Uh, so skateboard has definitely used that opportunity to rebuild. Um, they didn't let it phase them, really. They just saw that, okay, you took away this much, but we still have this much to build from. And then, boom, we just skated half of it and built all the stuff, you know, that we wanted to skate, boom, at the top and just made it happen. We tried fixing the cracks, started just concreting them over, filling in any holes we seen. And one of the first things I built was a quarter pipe. At, when, it was, when we were rebuilding them, the first thing was a quarter pipe, and I used old parts of some of the old banks to build the quarter pipe. And at first, the cops were just throwing us out, so we had to wait a while. Eventually, we went back and built built this perfect grind ledge. And that's what brought everybody back. Everybody seen it was there. People started coming up again, skating the ledge. Cops were leaving us alone. And we just, just kept on going, just kept on building, just pushing our luck. And it, it, it came back. had like a runway of cool shit. I mean, and then Ridge was back on. Ridge number two, you know what I mean? We just didn't have, not even half. It was like a fucking sliver of what we used to have. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, it was still great though. And then like kind of like a newer crew of kids started to show up to Ridge. A shame, think something new.
Contingents would, you know, whether it be the county or a private developer or whatever, would just try to just take it, take it, bulldoze it, bulldoze it. But just the tenacity of us, like, it's still here though. It's ours. We're gonna do this, and we just kept doing it and doing it and doing it till literally it was just grass and dirt. Uh, there's some footage still of even when it's grass and dirt, the dirt's just brushed away, and there's still. Uh, you know, footage skating like one of the ramps at the bottom with just complete rubble around or whatever because it's just that of what is this going to be? What soulless void of a space is this going to occupy? Somebody definitely bought it this time um, and they kicked all the kids out. They, they busted up everything. I mean, there was nothing. They cleared the whole um, lot and then, um, and then they started building. So you knew that they were serious this time because they actually came in and started to do something with it. And from that point on, it was um, it was gone. It was like really the end this time where there was before it was like the end, but then it wasn't the end. And but this time it, it really was the end. And it was really sad um, because it was such a huge part of my kids' life and all of and their friends. What separates Ridge from all other spots was that we lost it once. It got torn down, but well, but we didn't stop. We, we rebuilt it. Maybe not as good as it once was, but it, 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 it didn't matter because it, it brought the feeling of Ridge back. It brought everybody back and it, it was home again. I mean, like you said, it, you know, it is, it's just an abandoned foundation, but like the people that spent time up there and like the, you know, bonds that were made up there, it's like it, it made a more sacred ground than just a skate spot. They fucking destroyed everything we built. Everything. It fucking hit real hard. Fucking sucked. And that was probably one of the hardest things to go up and, you know, walk the grounds of one of the most important places, you know, physical places in my life um, and not, not even be able to know where I am. But one of the really cool things, and it was really nice for me, was that the house still stands. So Earl's house is still there. And that was the one thing that gave me perspective. When I was standing on the grounds of Ridge, uh, I knew where I was solely based on where Earl's house was in the background. All they knew is that it was a piece of concrete they needed to destroy. And I know you're, people are all about doing, doing their jobs and things like that, but sometimes you gotta look at the bigger picture, you know? And you gotta look, you gotta go to the place. You gotta see what's going on and see the impact it's having on people. And do something good with it instead of just turning it into a damn storage facility. That place is turning into a storage facility. And that's just kind of, you know, an analogy of like American life is you're just your creativity is often dwarfed by just generic commercial bullshit. And that happens all the time and it was just such a physical 
analogy of like life that happened. You know, we had this space where the creative potential of the people and the space and uh, you know, the actions we were doing, the art we're creating, the friendships, the whole deal was, uh, you know, all made way for a uh, storage unit. So people that buy more stuff than they need to can store it in a space that they pay for. Pretty cool. And eventually they won, man. They destroyed it all. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be storage units now. So I don't really see how that's necessary considering there's a huge storage unit uh, center right across the street. Like, how much storage units do you actually need? <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's, there's just only so much you can do. Unfortunately, we didn't own it. It really was a no joke. You know, Ridge Army was a thing. You know, it was, it was an onset agreement between a shit ton of friends, you know, that all took care of each other and that all held each other down and everybody patted each other on the back and everybody told you that you got it and to keep going and you got it next time. And that's what was so sad about losing it was to know that you would have to hunt for that experience now, that that experience wasn't no longer just given to you that you had to go out and find that experience again and you had to get everybody together to go find those experiences again. You know, losing Ridge wasn't losing one experience, it was losing every experience. You know, every experience that was a lesson in disguise. You know, that down the road, you know, looking at all of us now, we all could have been pretty bad, man. It could have got pretty thick for a lot of us. And to be honest with you, that space, if it wasn't for all of us meeting like-minded people, we all would have lost it, man. I mean, I don't know about you, but if you got problems, you need to look at somebody for it, right? Well, imagine having an entire crew of people there to tell you it's all good. Losing Ridge was like losing um, their family, like losing maybe the family that they didn't have um, in real life. You know, they're at home. Um, that was their their um, their connection with other people was going to Ridge, and you know, without that there, I think they were lost. And I think that I I don't know. Maybe it didn't. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. But it seemed like um, there were some that really went down the path of drugs. Uh, maybe it would have happened if Ridge was still around. Um, but I feel like maybe it wouldn't have. So I think that for some, losing Ridge was like losing their home and their family. So what happened was when it got shut down, these kids that really had nothing, it was kind of their outlet. Their home lives weren't that good, you know? So there was never a next spot after Ridge by, you know, in that area where they can continue skating. So a lot of people stop skating. And once you stop skating, that's what kept you out of trouble is riding a skateboard because you can't be fucked up on drugs and skateboard. You have to at least be a, be a little bit in shape and coherent enough to learn tricks and skateboard. So a lot of those kids stopped skateboarding and got fucked up. Wild Ridge was there. You can look back at all the fun times and you can look back at all the all the crazy things that happened at Ridge. But what you can't do is you can't look at it and say, man, there were so many drugs there. Man, there were so many problems there. Because there were not. You know, there just wasn't. You know, you didn't have to ever deal with any of that kind of stuff. Some of my friends that I'd stop seeing, I'd see them, they gain like 50 pounds or they don't look so good maybe started doing some drugs, maybe just started drinking a lot. I definitely drank a lot, but yeah, enough to be a problem. Unfortunately, you know, the destruction of Ridge destroyed a lot of lives, you know, because without that support system, you know, their lives are already difficult enough. Like, 
they don't have that, then they're just a you know a victim to their to their circumstances. You know, I think uh, I was lucky. I think fortunately, I found my wife Nellie uh, before it was destroyed, and you know that kind of she kept me on track, definitely for sure. Um, it's sad, man. It sucks. You know, my family, they care, but like they don't know me, you know? So it's like my, my real family was like my rich people. All my rich people, they'd be the ones to make sure, like, oh, Danny, you need to talk to somebody, like, if something's going on. Or like, yo, Danny, you need to chill out. You're acting like a certain way. Like, they'd look out for you. Like, yo, here's some money. Here, get some food. Like, you know, they were like my, my true family, like all my rich people. So, you know, when that when that's you take all that away, I, I have I'm out here. I feel like I'm out here on my own, you know, so I wander my way into a situation that I'm accepted into. And it just lead it just led to, you know, led to what it led to. Um, some of us had some other problems. Like I had drug problems, not proud of them. But all that stemmed after Ridge. Yeah, I'm sure if the, it was never torn down that a lot of decisions wouldn't be made that had been made. You know, because, you know, everybody that was kind of like, like a, I don't know, like an unwritten policy up there, you know, like everyone just kind of knew what was cool and what wasn't. And once you were outside of that place, you get around different people. What's cool and what isn't cool is different to some people, you know? And uh, up at Ridge, I, there was just like a strong, you know, now this is what's cool and this is what isn't. If you don't like that, get the fuck out, you know? And I think that kept a lot of people straight, you know, that when it got shut down and they were partying elsewhere or elsewhere, you know, things became more acceptable, you know, did things you regret. So I was, you know, living a very stressful life, trying to, you know, figure out the real world, you know, as fast as I can, you know, living check to check. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another. I started living a different type of life. You know, skateboarding wasn't important to me. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to go clubbing. I wanted to part. I wanted to go roll, eat molly. Or, you know, I wanted to smoke blunts all day. Or, you know, or, I want to eat a whole bunch of Xanax and be knocked out for as long as I want to be knocked out, or let's go to the movies, but let's do sniff a whole bunch of perks first. You know, like staying out of jail, staying off drugs was like the number two things, you know, growing up that you need to learn to stay alive or whatever. And skateboarding saved me from that. But, you know, I still had skateboarding, but it just wasn't the same without Ridge. And uh, so, yeah, you, you, you know, you, you make, mistakes you do shit like that and that's what happened i, I did what, what was feared of so long and it was the drugs that was all that was important to me you know i literally was working just to get high and because life didn't seem important to me or didn't you know i didn't want to you know i didn't want to be around and you know and, and you know my best friends and my family are all dying and you know literally i, I literally I can count on two hands that all the family and friends I've lost just in the past five years. And it's like getting to the point where like, when am I gonna be next? Or, you know, why am I even here? It's like without skateboarding, like like my life's a puzzle I can't figure out. So it's, you know, I, I you know, I, I, my life definitely took a turn. Did Ridge save lives? Yeah, it did. It 100% did. Because the easiest and most unfortunate example to give, how many people did we lose while we had it? You know, I, I know of at least five or six that I can name off the top of my head right now that have died in the past two years. If we all would have been together at Ridge, we could have we seen it happening. And, and stepped in and tried to help out a little more. So yeah, I think Ridge could have saved some lives.
right after Ridge was taken from us, that's when um, that's when we started losing people. Um, yeah. Dave. <laughs> oh God, hold up. Let's see. Got final thoughts. For a while, it was literally just the Dunfield kids that were skateboarding at Ridge. Like, we had it all to ourselves for probably a, a solid few months, like maybe four or five months. And honestly, I think the first person we told that kind of got the word out was Dave Trageser. We told Dave, and that was all she wrote. Before we knew it, like a month later, it was hot. It was a skate park, you know? And at first we were kind of upset about it, you know, because that was our secret little spot, but thank God he told him. Thank God, Dave. Uh, The closing down of Ridge uh, definitely had an impact on Dave. He was definitely depressed. You know, he lost his, his home, his place to skate, you know, all that time with his friends. And it, it really took a toll on him. Um, and it was hard on me too. You know, I was really sad for him and everybody to, to see it end like that. It was just a special place place that can't be duplicated, an experience that um, you guys will be forever grateful for and etched in all of your minds. So it was really hard on, on Dave and myself, as well as everyone that lived there, so to speak. And Dave was experimenting. Um, and unfortunately, he had alcohol and, and drugs and which took his life. I miss my friends. When, when we lost Dave, we, we went to the remnants of what Ridge was, piles of rocks. And, you know, dark, it's cold, it was the, the winter. And uh, being there and seeing people who had lost touch with each other just stand there and, and hug in the cold, I think despite all those amazing, wonderful memories, that happy times, the cookout, I think that that moment made me realize how important it was, how special it was to, to look at a now grown up, you know, in the face and hug them and be like, I miss you, I miss this, I miss us. We need to get back together and make this happen again. I think that's probably the most, my most powerful moment at Ridge. You know, lighting candles in the dark and knowing that it was something. It wasn't made up in our heads as teenagers. Like, this was actually something. Well, it just kind of hit me. Like, if it wasn't for Dave, like, we wouldn't have any of this, man. Thank God he told everybody. So I heard about Ridge through a, through a really, really cool kid named Dave Trageser, who um, 
Sorry. Um, We need uh, something for kids to do that's not drugs or alcohol. Um, you know, people always want to build, you know, parks with baseball fields and basketball courts, and that stuff is great, but it's not the same as skateboarding. Uh, skateboarding can be very individual. You can go by yourself and shred and have a great time. You can go and not even bring your board and just hang out with the people that are there. So, you know, Ridge, I really think, was a great starting point to build that bigger community. I don't feel content with the world happening around me. If everyone would just, you know, keep to themselves and not do anything, the world's just going to happen around you. If you feel like you have an idea or something to contribute or you care so much about something that you don't want to see diluted or whatever, you get involved. And that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to offer some direction to something I knew I was going to utilize and I knew something that was so important that just filled this void that uh, the area shouldn't have. And I, I started working uh, with Skate Park of Baltimore in 2015 uh, very closely. I did some, you know, fundraising events uh, before and, you know, like some skate stuff, but like actively working on the board with like fundraising and event uh, promotion and uh, uh, just putting on events and all that stuff, all the paperwork, all the stuff that no one sees or cares about, all the lunchtime meetings with uh, city, uh, city council people, staff and Rex and Park staff and all that, just the super boring stuff but super necessary to get the idea of why we need a skate park, what that skate park should offer, what it should look like, and all that needs to be communicated to people that have the power to fund and like make these things happen that don't necessarily get it. Ridge was just there, we just, we just took it, you know? It was great and just kind of asked for permission later. Um, but to do it, you know, above board and all that is so taxing and there's so many roadblocks and letdowns and things you don't think about, about, you know, your skate park is now gonna get bumped out for a sewer project or another funding opportunity or whatever. And you have to compete, you have to be the voice of that community that you believe is underserved. And uh, being able to do that uh, has been really great. And now I'm getting involved with the Baltimore County Skateboard Council. Uh, it's a nonprofit that just got started um, within the past year that is now the rec council for all skateboarding in uh, Baltimore County. And it's the first countywide uh, rec council. And it's gonna be our priority now in Baltimore County to bring skate parks into the 21st century for Baltimore County. One of the richest counties in America and they don't have a skate park. I mean, you have skate parks all over the Pacific Northwest in towns of 400 people that are way better than everything we have in Baltimore County, just prefab metal, uh, set it and forget it, uh, forever parks. And, you know, the hours are awful. Uh, there's, you know, like, uh, the access is limited. It's just not what a skate spot, a skate park needs to be. And again, I think it's a matter of education, of giving them the narrative of what a skate park offers people besides recreational development, you know, just emotional and uh, just the stimulation of uh, creativity that a skate park provides without any, without any guidance, without any coaches, without anything, just doing it you know and um, we've had some great partners uh, along the way and I, I really think we're in a good place to get something that put, could potentially fill the gap that uh, Ridge left where you know at least we got a meeting place at least we got this but in the same vein as Ridge 
I hope that, you know, that core group Ridge Army will come to the table and go, I'm now you know, in this space, let's do it, you know, above board, all the red tape, I'm willing, Here's, here are our ideas, this is how we want to see. Remember when we had this at Ridge, let's put that in the skate park design. That would be cool if we could incorporate, you know, uh, remember the, the quarter pipe we used to have? We'll put that over here and then it'll be like the Ridge quarter pipe or, you know, the Ridge hubba and do all this. And all of that can happen. And it's just a matter of people willing to put in the time and energy. And I know I am and I hope, you know, everyone else is uh, ready to do it too. Mama's cooking in the kitchen And our stomachs have eyes We take a seat at the table As the sun splits through the open blinds Dolly's barking from the front yard She wants to come inside hey, I got a sweet suspicion These are good times That our sunrise Would come that a goodbye I never gone I say feel that rhythm Let your mind let go Picking up on the subtle signals of your slight The selfish disconnected All the things we have perfected When the wind changed with all its might I think we better learn sometime I think we better learn sometime We're walking through the courtyard and leaves roll over our shoestrings. So we speak of family and love, the only true things. I know that vanity is day. The queen says off with its head. And we can lay under the clouds, and dad would be proud of the men we became. And that our sunrise would still come. That a goodbye. I never gone, never gone, never gone. So yeah, so you feel that rhythm that your mind let go. Picking up on the subtle signals in your sight. The selfish disconnected all the things we had perfected when the wind changed with all its might. I think we better learn sometimes. 